The state of West Virginia is a rugged land blessed with incomparable beauty. Above the rolling meadows tower mountains that stand like icons to the eternal power of nature. These mountains, this power, feed the sparkling waters that cascade through the heart of the state, bringing life to its people. These people respect this power, for it is their lifeblood. They respect dedication and hard work, for that is the only pathway to success. They admire loyalty, for that is the mark of a champion. In 1988, these qualities were affirmed by a group of young men who refused to accept anything less than perfection. Their dedication, their loyalty, inspired an entire state to burst with pride. For in the reflection of these fresh young faces, they saw themselves. Their principles and values were brought to life by the unequaled success of the West Virginia University Mountaineers. This team had completed a journey that none other could make and returned with the treasure of an undefeated season. For the people of West Virginia, this storybook football season was the perfect gift. The 1988 Mountaineer football highlights are sponsored by Key Centurion Bank Shares. The fall of 1988 was most exciting for Key Centurion and our member banks. Not only was it the beginning of our association with West Virginia University Intercollegiate Athletics, it was also the most exciting football season Mountaineer fans have ever experienced. The spirit shown during this time was a perfect gift to the people of West Virginia, who are now poised to carry this momentum into a positive future for our state. Now, Key Centurion invites you to enjoy the season once again as we relive the excitement of Mountaineer football in 1988. As fall practice opened in Morgantown, Don Nealon was cautiously optimistic about the season ahead. Returning were 43 lettermen who would provide a solid foundation for this team. The offensive line would return intact, fifth-year seniors from tackle to tackle. The nucleus of the 88 attack would be built upon their broad shoulders. We've been together. We've really kept each other on positive notes when one of us was down. You know, I could always turn to Rick, Bob, anyone, and, and they would always be there to help me with things, and, and the same with us to everyone else. So being together, kind of like a family on the offensive line, really keeps us going and keeps us working for each other. The backfield was filled with thoroughbred runners, each with his own style of play that would complement the option-oriented offense. And of course, sensational quarterback Major Harris returned for only his second season at the helm. The defense, under new leadership, figured to be solid with 19 returning lettermen. A talented linebacking core would complement a strong secondary, but there would be major gaps to fill up front. And while Neyland saw the potential of big things on the horizon, one man was not so bashful with his enthusiasm. When all the bowl games are over, one team will be 12-0 and, and number one in the country. That team is West Virginia. Yeah! Well, daggone you, Vino, no one's ever accused you of being real smart, you know. I tell you what, <laughs> if you lose to Bowling Green, you won't see Sunday. <laughs> You're right. The season got off to a flying start as West Virginia crushed Bowling Green 62-14 in Morgantown. The swarming West Virginia defense proved in the first series that it came to play. A muffed punt, and Willie Edwards became the first of many Mountaineers to score on the new Omniturf surface in 1988. The big story of the day was an explosive Mountaineer rushing attack that netted 367 yards. Six different West Virginia ball carriers crossed the goal line that spectacular afternoon. At a touchdown strike from Major Harris to newcomer Reggie Rembert, and West Virginia had notched victory number one. It was a special win for Don Nealon at the expense of his alma mater. With this triumph, he had become the all-time winningest coach in only his ninth season at WVU. Week number two brought Cal State Fullerton to town for a matchup that the Titans would rather forget. 
Senior tailback A.B. Brown rambled for 95 yards and two touchdowns. Senior backfield buddy Andre Johnson, the third leading rusher in Mountaineer history, soared over the top for two touchdowns. Major Harris had a good roll of the dice hitting seven of 11 passes on the day. Sophomore Greg Jones unveiled his laser-like arm on a strike to Calvin Phillips. Number 82 had a spectacular afternoon, tying a school record with five catches for 190 yards. The Mountaineer defense held the Titans to less than 200 yards of total offense, and blasted through for four sacks to seal the 45 to 10 victory. Well, after convincing back-to-back -back wins at home, the West Virginia Mountaineers will have their first big test of the season Saturday as the Maryland Terrapins invade Morgantown. WVU averaged 53 points per game in their first two battles, but the always tough Terps are 3-1 and one at Mountaineer Field since 1980. A capacity crowd is expected, and if you have a ticket, take your rain gear because showers are predicted over most of the Mountain State this weekend. On September 17th, the Maryland Terrapins floated into a rain-swept Mountaineer field with upset on their mind. Two first-quarter touchdowns, and West Virginia was down by 14 points. However, WVU came back to score again, and again, and again on the way to a 55-24 route of Maryland. The Mountaineers racked up 540 yards of total offense. Five different ball carriers scored that day, including Craig Taylor, the senior fullback who never lost a single yard rushing in his outstanding career at WVU. The Mountaineer pass defense was vicious, picking off three interceptions, including an incredible Ronaldo Turnbull tip to defensive tackle Chris Parker. The defense even got on the scoreboard, thanks to senior co-captain Bo Orlando. And back goes Zolak. Zolak fires one, picked off, up over the 50, down to the 40-yard line, the 30. Bo Orlando running to the 20, the 10. Bo Orlando going in for a West Virginia touchdown. Intercepting on the pass, coming out to the near side, 55 yards. The ball intended for Ricky Johnson. Orlando picked it off and ran. Three wins in three weeks set the stage for the backyard brawl in Pittsburgh. Sixth-ranked West Virginia got on the board first when Major Harris hit a wide-open Reggie Rembert for a 33-yard touchdown pass. Sixteenth-ranked Pitt battled back to keep it close in the first half. But early in the third quarter, A.B. Brown put this one away for good with a 64-yard TD sprint. Andre Johnson added a 20-yard scoring jaunt around the left end, and Craig Taylor took a dive over the top to lead WVU to a 31-10 pasting of the Panthers. The Mountaineer defense crushed Pitt with four timely sacks, and Al Boyd Mays picked off two of the three West Virginia interceptions. It was the kind of defensive effort that makes coaches swell with pride. Week number five brought another road trip and another victory. This time at the expense of the Virginia Tech Hokies in a sold-out Lane Stadium. Senior place kicker Charlie Bauman blasted three field goals to lead the Golden Blue Assault. Bauman had a spectacular year for West Virginia. He ranked among the leaders nationally in scoring average with more than 10 points per game. Craig Taylor added a touchdown blast with an eight-yard run, and A.B. Brown scored from inside to cap off his incredible 191-yard effort on the day. Linebacker Chris Herring added 18 tackles as the 5-0 Mountaineers won this one 22-10. The next week, WVU traveled south again to do battle with the East Carolina Pirates. The number five Mountaineers proved they deserved the high national ranking with a 30-10 victory in Greenville, North Carolina. Andre Johnson rambled for 167 yards and two touchdowns to lead a powerful WVU ground attack. The other story in this game was the depth of this Mountaineer squad. Reserve tight end Adrian Moss stepped into the limelight to haul in five passes for 80 yards and a touchdown. The West Virginia defense held the Pirates to less than 200 yards total offense and racked up four sacks to seal the victory. We were there before. In 1984, we won our first six football games. But knowing what we know now, 
we ought to be able to learn from 84 because we got some big games coming in here. The challenge and the opportunity is just tremendous for this football team. I'm anxious to see how we handle the next five football games. After an open date, West Virginia faced a key test against Eastern rival Boston College. In the opening drive, WVU marched 80 yards in nine plays as Craig Taylor pounded in for the score. A prophetic start because the Mountaineers scored almost at will on the way to a 59-19 blowout in Morgantown. Andre Johnson racked up another 100-yard game and added two touchdowns to his collection. But it was Major Harris who took center stage. He accounted for a record-setting 372 yards of total offense. He ran for 75 yards and two touchdowns in little more than three quarters of play. He also threw for three touchdowns and 297 yards. This young man added a third dimension to an already powerful West Virginia offense. Because you may be able to stop the pass, and you may be able to stop the run, but you can't stop the major. But there were many heroes on this afternoon. The carnivorous WVU defense chewed on BC quarterbacks all day long, plucking the highly regarded Eagle passing attack with six sacks. That set up a grudge match with the Penn State Nittany Lions. On hand, the largest crowd ever at West Virginia. A fired up Mountaineer squad anxious to claim revenge for last year's close loss. And a coast to coast TV audience that would determine in its own mind if this number four football team had the right stuff. You may not recognize them, but there's a new powerhouse emerging in college football. And in West Virginia, fans will tell you this is the strongest Mountaineer team ever. They are led by explosive quarterback Major Harris and a defense that has held off every opponent this year. Ranked number seven and undefeated, the Mountaineers are brimming with pride and confidence for the biggest game they've ever played. With the stage set, Major Harris grabbed the spotlight on the prettiest broken play you'll ever see. Here is Harris in trouble. Stiff arms, a would-be tackler, comes out of the 25 to 20. Goes around about it to 15 to 10 to 5. A touchdown with Virginia. He did it. What a move he made on the first tackler. What a move he made on the second, on the third. And he gallops in for the touchdown. Takes it all the way in. Later in the first quarter, Harris hit Rembert on a crossing pattern over the middle. West Virginia 14. Penn State nothing. The battering continued in the second quarter as Major, with some beautiful protection up front, hit Calvin Phillips on a long bomb. Craig Taylor earned some frequent flyer points with a dive over the top. Then with only seconds left in the first half, Andre Johnson took a time-killing draw play down the sideline for a touchdown that gave the Mountaineers an insurmountable 41-8 halftime lead. In the second half, Charlie Bauman added a 39-yard field goal, and then in the last West Virginia drive, Eugene Napoleon squirmed out of the pack and raced 69 yards to put the Lions back in their game. WVU totaled 563 yards of offense and averaged nearly eight yards per play. With those kind of numbers, it's a wonder the Mountaineer defense ever had to take the field. But they did, and in a big way coming up with five pass deflections and two interceptions to wrap up a sweet 51-30 win over Penn State. Okay, in sports tonight, the Mountaineers fresh off their big win over Penn State travel to Ohio this weekend to tackle the Cincinnati Bearcats. Now, they come in 8-0, and you've got to believe that they're going to be heavy favorites, but they also have to avoid the emotional letdown or Cincinnati could pull the upset of the year in college football. Mountaineer players and coaches say they're ready to go for number nine in a row. We'll find out this weekend. Kickoff. Is set for 1:30. The Mountaineers started November out in fine fashion with a 51-13 win at Riverfront Stadium against Cincinnati. Harris fired three touchdown passes on the day, and Reggie Rembert scored every time he touched the ball. The lanky receiver had two catches for two touchdowns, and then took off on a 51-yard reverse play that struck gold in the third quarter. 
The Mountaineer defense shut down the Bearcats by forcing four turnovers to extend the winning streak to nine. On election week, WVU traveled to Giant Stadium to tackle Rutgers. Here it was the West Virginia defense that stepped in and squashed the surging Scarlet Knights. The Mountaineers picked off three Rutgers throws and forced a fumble to go with five sacks and a half dozen broken up passes. In fact, the defense lit up the scoreboard first when Darrell Whitmore picked off the first Scarlet Knight pass and scootered in for the touchdown. Offensively, it was business as usual. Harris hit Rembert on a long bomb for his seventh TV catch of the year. Hundra plowed off right guard for a score, and Craig Taylor redefined the term second effort as he refused to be denied this touchdown in the third quarter. Pack on another Taylor TV in the fourth, and WVU flew home with a 35-25 win. Just 60 minutes separated West Virginia from perfection, and they were not about to let Syracuse stand in the way. Tonight, the Mountaineers are 10-0. They need a win over Syracuse to seal up an undefeated season before they go on to the Fiesta Bowl to play Notre Dame. But I want to invite all of you, win or lose tonight, I know you're going to win, but either way, we're still very proud, and we still want you out there in Phoenix playing the Irish and Notre Dame. Right. The 14th-ranked Orangemen squeezed into a sold-out Mountaineer field on this cold and rainy night to determine who would be the Feast of the Feast in 1988. With a nationwide television audience looking on, the Feast roared and its name was West Virginia. Craig Taylor blasted through on the first Mountaineer possession, and any Syracuse upset hopes were quickly dashed. The Orange battled back. Stifling West Virginia defense came up with six turnovers on the night, including four interceptions. Late in the first half, Deron Ellis picked off a Syracuse pass and rumbled downfield to give WVU another crack at the goal line. Craig Taylor blasted through for the score, and the Mountaineers were up by 11 at the break. In the third quarter, Willie Edwards, who scored in the first game of the year, did it again in the last, with a touchdown steal that shut the door on the Orange Bowl. Charlie Bauman added a three-point cushion with a fourth-quarter field goal, and Andre Johnson capped off the evening with a dive over the top to give the number four Mountaineer a 31-9 win and an undefeated season. And after the game, this family of 65,000 emotional West Virginians poured out its heart for a team that had reached its destiny and for a man whose dedication to excellence inspired an entire state. It was a touching tribute to the perfection of the 1988 West Virginia University Mountaineers. I've coached 30 years. In those 30 years, I've had a couple teams that have won nine games, a couple teams that have won eight games. I had a high school team once win 10 games, but no team that I've ever coached has been good enough and stayed on track long enough to win 11 football games. From a professional standpoint, this is just unheard of. When you think how many teams there are in America, and some years nobody goes undefeated, most years maybe one team or two, and it's happened here at West Virginia, first time in 96 years, it's a great accomplishment, one in which I'm extremely proud. As soon as the Mountaineer plane landed in Phoenix the day after Christmas, there was no doubt that this would be the experience of a lifetime. The crisp desert air surrounding the well-appointed West Virginia headquarters was delightful. The facility was centrally located to the WVU practice field where countless media members got a first-hand look at the best team in the East. During the day, it was all business as West Virginia sharpened a game plan dedicated to stopping the top-ranked Fighting Irish. But during the evening hours, both teams celebrated the rewards of perfect season and experienced the unequal hospitality of the American Southwest. And as game day arrived, there was no doubt that this national championship was the hottest ticket in America. Thousands of Mountaineer fans had followed the team across the country with a loyal passion. This was it, the single greatest moment in the history of West Virginia football.
Eugene Napoleon took the opening kickoff and moved upfield for a 19-yard return. Then the worst possible Mountaineer nightmare came true as Major Harris suffered a shoulder injury on the game's third play. The option attack was crippled with Major unable to run effectively and despite his heroic effort, that turned the tide of the battle. But the Mountaineers never gave up as Harris hit Grantis Bell for a third quarter touchdown and Reggie Rembert scored another TD in the fourth period. But these Herculean efforts fell short as Notre Dame won the game and the national championship. Despite the loss of this one single game, this team accomplished more than any other in the history of West Virginia. They didn't just win a few football games. They inspired hundreds of thousands of West Virginians to believe in themselves, to believe that success is not a right but a privilege granted only to those who understand that back-breaking sacrifice and single-minded dedication are the true mark of victory. You've taken us to the top of the mountain. Don't ever let anybody think for a moment that we're not proud. You've made us 10 foot tall and we love you for it. Because I want you to understand the coach and the football team is not a one-man gang. This is a joint effort by a lot of people, and I'm very, very fortunate. In closing, I'd just like to say, this has been a hell of a lot of fun. Let's do it again next year. For Don Nealon, the 1988 season was the benchmark of an illustrious career. He was named National Coach of the Year by no less than four organizations including the prestigious Kodak Award given by his peers in the American Football Coaches Association. And although he's appreciative of the recognition, he is the first to give credit to his outstanding coaching staff. These dedicated men called upon more than 150 years of college coaching experience to make this program a winner. In 1988, the All-American squads were filled with names from West Virginia. The Associated Press named 14 Mountaineers to its All-American